It's impossible to say how first the idea entered my brain, but once conceived, it haunted me day and night. Object there was none, passion there was none. I loved the old man. He had never wronged me, he had never gained me insult. For his gold I had no desire. I think it was his eye. Yes, yes, it was this. He had the eye of a vulture, a pale blue, blue eye with a film over it. Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold, and so by degrees, very gradually, I made up my mind to take the life of the old man, and thus rid myself of the eye forever. Now this is the point. You fancy me mad. Madmen know nothing. But you should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded, with what caution, with what foresight, with what dissimulation I went to work. I was never kinder to the old man than during the whole week before I killed him. And every night, about midnight, I turned the latch of his door and opened it. When I had made an opening sufficient for my head, I put in a dark lantern, and then I thrust in my head. Oh, you would have laughed to see how cunningly I thrust it in. I moved in slowly very, very slowly, so that I might not disturb the old man's sleep. And this I did for seven long nights, every night just at midnight, but I found the eye always closed. And so it was impossible to do the work, for it was not the old man who vexed me, but his evil eye. Upon the eighth night, I was more than usually cautious in opening the door. I never before that night had I felt the extent of my own powers to think that there I was opening the door little by little, and he not even to dream of my secret deeds or thoughts. Steadily I had my head in, and was about to open the lantern, when my thumb slipped upon the tin fastening, and the old man sprang up in bed, crying out, Who's there? Who's there? I kept quite still and said nothing. For a whole hour I did not move a muscle. I knew that he had been lying awake ever since the first slight noise. And have I not told you that what you mistake for madness is but over acuteness of the sense? Now I say, there came to my ears a low, dull, quick sound, such as a watch makes when enveloped in cotton. I knew that sound well too. It was the beating of the old man's heart. It increased my fury as the beating of a drum stimulates the soldier into courage. Meantime, the hellish tattoo of the heart increased. It grew quicker and quicker and louder and louder every instant. The old man's terror must have been extreme. It grew louder, I say, louder every moment. Do you mark me well? The old man's hour had come. I'm Detective Porter. This is Detective O'Brien. Good afternoon, sir. We got some reports that there were screams coming from this residence last night. You mind if we take a step inside? Sure. Come right in. I bade the gentleman welcome. The shriek, I said, was my own in a dream. The old man I mentioned was absent in the country. The officers were satisfied. My manner had convinced them I was singularly at ease. But ere long, I felt myself getting pale and wished them gone. My head ached, and I fancied a ringing in my ears. I talked more freely to get rid of the feeling, but it continued and gained definiteness. Until at length, I found that the noise was not within my ears. No doubt I now grew very pale. Why would they not be gone? I paced the floor to and fro with heavy strides, as if excited to fury by the observations of the men, but the noise steadily increased. Oh God, what could I do? It grew louder, 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 and still the men chatted pleasantly and smiled. Was it possible they heard not? Almighty God, no! No, they heard, they suspected, they knew. They were making a mockery of my horror. This I thought and this I think, but anything was better than this agony. Anything was more tolerable than this derision. I could bear those hypocritical smiles no longer. I felt that I must scream of die. And now again, hark louder, 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 louder! Friends, dissemble no more, I am 